This is a quick fix tutorial where I'm focusing only on difficult sections in the piece, applying only those principles that don't require sound imagination skills and will quickly ease your playing, making technique more comfortable and fluent. These basic principles are wrist movement, elbow movement, intonation, arm weight, articulations, phrasing and time. If you've been playing this piece for quite a while, keep in mind that all these principles won't work at full potential, as all sensations might interfere with new ones. Yet they will ease your playing as much as possible in your current situation. This is just a basic fix to let you feel more comfortable while playing, and since we're not imagining sounds, we're not making any harmonies, dynamics or voice and nuances in this tutorial. Match the wrist movement with the known direction. Move gently without any tension. At the last stage of practicing, this movement will be remained in muscle sensations only and won't be visible to the eyes. This will keep your wrist tension free. And a missing fingering in the score before starting playing. While the wrist movement is matching the known direction, the elbow is moving towards the new position on a circle note. This will release tension in hands and improve speed and accuracy in leaps. So let's jump right to the most challenging part in this video and start with Let's say right hand, wrist and elbow movements. Everything has to be done very precisely, so in the future you wouldn't feel uncomfortable while playing, when you play a bit faster. Completely relaxed hands, there is no tension, tension will come later, healthy tension, that will let you control tone and uh, singing. Tone, what? Tone through this internal singing. So for now, just a wrist movement that follows the melody pattern and elbow movements on the circle note. Just want to mention again, um, this is, I just talk about this in into number 11. This is one of the etudes I never played and I never imagined everything, anything here and I did not imagine anything here for this tutorial and I could clearly see the difference between sensations in my fingertips and hands when I am imagining notes and when I'm not. When I'm imagining notes I really feel that um, my hand can relax because I have impulse on my fingertips that clean they are that are clinging to the key keys very precisely. And also here kind of really feel my, I don't know how to explain, it's like an energy. <laughs> I'm sorry about energy, but I don't know how else to describe it. Sensations, electricity, whatever, um, that I feel here when I imagine create in my mind, for example, the sounds. But when I'm not doing it, <laughs> then I feel that I'm not, I'm not having those cleaning fingertips and um, my fingertips are dull and as a result my sound is dull as well, my tone is very dull. And also that leads to, to uncomfortable sensation in my whole arm somehow because now it cannot rely just on fingertips, now my whole arm tries to cling to the keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> which is very clumsy. So 
yeah i'm really really i really want to encourage you to spend some minutes every day to start imagining now because every single touch comes from our imagination we can design every note in our imagination before we playing it and that's not for some kind of musicality or whatever that's really for the technique <laughs> really for your fingertips so all right as they said let's go so doing without imagination will not like it but it is what it is i'm not doing it in this tutorial and i wanted to add one more thing uh when i'm gonna play you will notice that uh, my double notes sometimes are not really together <laughs> but I'm not gonna pay to this much intention much intention much much attention because um, I am not imagining anything so I'm not gonna like tense my hand trying to play them together because I know that uh, when I would imagine notes several notes together in my mind this is how I would control the impulse towards my fingers and this is how my fingers would control the touch. So I'm just saying that again, with your imagination, uh, you will be able to control the evenness uh, of double notes. Um, but again, since I'm not doing it, I'll just let go and just let it be as it is. wrist and elbow is could be real could be real bit, a little bit challenging so just take your time don't make any like uncomfortable too quick movements wrist left elbow gently right everything <laughs> in a loving and kindness way
be the most complicated with elbow movements because most of the time really elbow and wrist don't match. Um, okay, let's do the same with the left hand. Sing in between notes with a glissando and resistance. Keep the same sensation while singing out loud only notes. While playing, keep singing the same way internally. It is possible to sing the same way while playing fast passages. Internally sing with the energy of weight. This is how it sounds without weight versus with weight. Such singing will sustain transferring of weight while playing, bringing more freedom and power to your voice and hands. We're going to the next step, intonation, articulations and weight. So um, let me just clarify something here. I was a bit confused because in some editions 
Chopin's style. So uh, I made some research and actually in the very first edition it's not really accent what is written there. It's written mostly like little crescendo towards second to this third and then from here to crescendo. So again maybe he just wanted to highlight this high end. Which you know how to make. Articulations are the variant of intonation, where the principle of singing internally in between notes with a glissando resistance remains the same. In every type of articulations, the first part of the interval is sung with resistance, but the second part is varied. In staccato, extremely accelerate the speed. <laughs> And tenuta, move fully down with weight. In accents, mix staccato and tenuta, bring speed and weight at the same time. So it's um, the acceleration in your singing should be a, a little bit less than in staccato, not that fast. So not just but kind of more loose staccato. That would be our non legata.
uh, slurs because we're not in the phrasing yet. So let's go and make left hand with intonation, weight and articulation. <laughs> Phrasing is a structured intonation, breathing, where smaller blocks with more prominent sections are united into larger blocks with more prominent sections. Use intonation and weight in phrasing to make energetic crescendo towards more prominent sections and blocks. While practicing phrasing, take a little break, a breath after every block, and slow down towards the main interval in a motif, the main motif in a phrase, and the main phrase in a sentence. And phrasing, right hand. One motif, one bar, uh, internally singing, distributing energy towards the last interval in the slur which is towards the main note in, in the first beat of the bar. And I'm gonna stop after every motif. Over here, now let's do our short slurs. So again, the best way to make short slurs is to imagine that there is an invisible note before the first note and where the main interval comes and leads to this uh, first interval. So for example here, instead of imagine that we have so in this case you would intonate and then singing this first note out loud so it would be oh, just this movement of energy towards the first note will be remained oh, 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 oh. so 
that's a very good exercise that will help you to not only understand <laughs> but to feel how it is to play small slurs from the first note so let's go <laughs> small slurs into one motif slur and bring everything to the last one so last into one motif and now over here the main slur would be not the last one but the very first one so it's gonna go so let's go in a way with energetic diminuendo every motif second motif so you can see on the screen uh, the main motif is a red slur this kind of belongs to the previous one this first one here Motive. 
So not only small slivers in the mortise goes with diminuendo, but also the phrase also goes with diminuendo. So first motive more important, second less. <laughs> Thank you. 
Time and tempo mean more than just the speed of music, it's a part of the character of music. After choosing the pulsation, connect time to the musical image of the piece, and if the image of music is joyful, feel and describe the pulse not as just slow, but calm and peaceful, not just faster, but lively and exciting, not just fast, but energetic and bright. Feel time while playing always following a phrasing line to sustain the flow of playing. Moving on to the right hand, we're gonna pulsate here. I think by A bit quaver because as I remember it's not that fast. Let's start quite calm.
it for today oh, and see you in my next video. Bye bye.